Hey, here's video two of my series on Finnegan's Wake. Um, Finnegan's Wake is about everything and nothing. How can that be? Well, when Joyce finished Ulysses, he was asked what he was going to write about. I think, he replied, I will write a history of the world. That takes care of everything. Why is, how is it a book about everything? Well, it's the history of the world. Then he attached an addendum when he remarked that he created Ulysses out of next to nothing. Ulysses was his one of his other great books and considered one of the greatest books in English literature. And that he was creating Finnegan's Wake out of nothing. So Ulysses out of next to nothing, Finnegan's Wake out of nothing at all. When this contradiction is understood, the many mysteries of Joyce's complex classic will be understood and Gertrude Stein's contradictory comment may become clear. Gertrude Stein said this about it. People like him, meaning Joyce, because he is incomprehensible and anybody can understand him. He's incomprehensible and anybody can understand him. That's why people like him. So let's begin with what so far seems somewhat clear and comprehensible. Wakeian scholar William York Tyndall has famously remarked that Finnegan's Wake is about Finnegan's Wake. And Joyce's friend and fellow Irishman Samuel Beckett expanded on this by stating that Finnegan's Wake is not about something, it is that something itself. So that's a pretty cool thing to say about a work of art, right? It's not about something else, it is the thing. Even more expansive is Wakeian Margot Norris's comment, Finnegan's Wake might be said to be about not being certain what it is about. Its subject is the nature of indeterminacy itself. So pretty cool stuff. By the way, Samuel Beckett, right? He's uh, a writer of modern kind of nonsensical plays, um, a, a lot of modernism, a lot of postmodernism, a lot of um, we don't know what the meaning of things are. So that is very tied into the meaning of this book. Okay, I'll, I'll try not to add my own commentary too much. Going straight to the source, when Joyce was asked what he was writing, he replied, it's hard to say. <laughs> And that's funny. That's like a really great pun. I laughed out loud when I read that part because when you get to the book, you'll understand. It is hard to say. Like there are hundred letter words that he made up taking snatches of letters from all these different languages and creating these giant portmanteau words. So it is hard to say. It's, it's a very good, very um, clever pun that he made there. And at least at its beginning, it was hard for Joyce to say what his novel novel was all about as he slowly and carefully wrote its way wrote his way into it but he quickly became sure of two things it's about the night and it's meant to make you laugh okay so combining these comments he called it my nocturnal comedy and being somebody who likes to laugh likes to make jokes likes to make other people laugh myself and somebody who has pretty much become entirely nocturnal um I love the idea of a nocturnal comedy. It's important not to forget the comedic aspect, for it's a great part of what The Wake is all about. As the lyrics of the Irish-American ballad Finnegan's Wake go, wasn't it the truth I told you, lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake? Joyce's wife Nora reported that he often kept her awake at night, frequently laughing out loud in the next room as he wrote. So he was laughing at his own book as he was writing it, which I kind of identify with. And while his comic epic took on cosmic proportions, it's good to remember that the difference between cosmic and comic is a single letter. It's also a very profound and poignant little sentence right there. Finnegan's Wake calls itself a, a nighty novel, all one word, nighty novel, nighttime and naughty, a non-day diary, and an all-nights newsery reel. Newsery reel, all one word. Newsreel and nursery rhyme put together make newsery reel. As Joyce said to a friend, it's natural things should not be so clear at night, isn't it now? And it follows, he said, the night world can't be represented by the language of the day. That's a very insightful sentence about Finnegan's Wake. The night world can't be represented by the language of the day. So he had to invent his own language to describe the night world that he was, that he was uh, writing about. 
Because it is a night piece, partly explains why it is so dimmed difficult. So the writer here makes a little play on words. It's so dim difficult to say what Finnegan's Wake is about. The wake maintains it's as easy as ABC, to which Joyce added, if there is any difficulty in reading what I write, it is because of the material I use. The thought is always simple. So that's a, a key to understanding it is he's not trying to say something overly profound. He's trying to say simple things that everyone can understand and if you have difficulty getting it, it's because of the material, the way that he's writing it. As to what that simple thought is, the wake says, "'Tis as human a little story as paper could well carry." So it's centered on one family that represents all families. On a mythological level, Joyce said it was the dream of the legendary giant Finn McCool, which was an actual person, Finn McCool, which is like one of the coolest names of anybody ever. Asleep beside the river Liffey as the history of the world flows past. It's also a vast, V-A-A-S-T, riddle and puzzle as well. Yet on a literary level, it's the reassembling of the fallen Tower of Babel. The reassembling of the fallen Tower of Babel. So taking all the different languages that we were spread into and bringing them all back together into one, right? Reassembling the Tower of Babel. And on a universal level, it's about everything between quarks and the chaosmos. So chaosmos. So like cosmos, but with chaos in the middle. And like Tim Finnegan in the song Finnegan's Wake that gave Joyce his title. So that's where he got the title was from a song called Finnegan's Wake. There's a lot of falling to rise again going on. While all this may not sound so simple now, like walking into a darkened theater, your eyes will slowly become adapted to seeing not only the what, but the when, where, who, why, and how, as this account continues. Okay. All right, I'm going to end this video here so that they don't get too long and continue with this really good introduction to Fit Against Wake.